Welcome everybody to our webinar. Today we are going to present our global monitoring solution for power transformer, Trafo Nova. My name is Marco Piga, CSR manager at the KIMP, Altanova Group, and expert in global monitoring system and connecting from Bologna, Italy. This is our agenda today. After a quick introduction about Altanova Group, we will have uh, four different sections. Why monitoring of power transformer, uh, Trafo Nova section, partial discharge testing and monitoring, case study at the end, and our session on question and answer. We are, Autonomous Group uh, is a leading company. We are a leading company in the field of advanced condition assessment technology. Uh, today, Autonomous is a group of uh, three strong and long experienced companies in the market of testing and monitoring. These are ISA, TechIMP, and Intelliso. We provide solution covering the full range of uh, diagnostic tools for any practical uh, application in the electrical system for medium voltage and high voltage assets. You can find an example here below. We have solution for CTVTs, medium voltage and high voltage transformers, medium voltage and high voltage cables, surge arresters, ground grid, step and touch uh, substation testing, GAS, rotating machines, circuit breakers, switch gears, relays, and overhead power line. In this slide, you can see three pictures. Uh, our three headquarters, two are located in Italy, one in uh, not so far from Milan, ISA, uh, the second one in Bologna, TechIMP, and the third one in USA. We have also eight uh, regional offices are located in France, in Germany, Emirates, India, Singapore, another two in the US, Panama and Brazil. We have almost 100 um, distributors worldwide. You can have here a link if you want to watch which is your um, distributor for your country. You can click on this link. We have also several service uh, teams located in Italy, in Germany and the uh, USA, even in India, to perform online and offline commissioning installation activities. Then uh, three R&D departments, uh, mainly for offline and online competences on uh, medium voltage and high voltage application. And uh, this year we should reach almost 140 employees. Regarding our solution for transformers, um, we have a testing instrument for offline tests, the normal tests that are performed on high voltage transformers. We have a dedicated uh, partial discharge a portable unit and a monitoring solution for partial discharge, and surely uh, the global monitoring system that I'm going to present to you today, Trafonova. On the right, you have another link here if you want to download our guide on uh, on site condition assessment on transformer, you can use the link here below. This is another are other figures, other important study from CELG. This is a, a distributor operator in, in Brazil, now is Enel. And um, I would like to share with you also these figures. And this data are has been collected for almost 30 years from hundreds of um, transformer failures. And you can see here on these lines, the major components, 34% of failures was related to winding problems. 7% of cooling system, 11 on identified components, other 7% of tank and accessories, 20% on all oil type changer and DTC, only 4% in the oil as for insulation uh, components of the transformer, 2% of the core, 15% about bushings. So you can easily calculate the windings and bushing failures represent about 50% of the overall failures in high voltage transformers, and another 50% approximately is related to tanks and, and the cooling system. And with this webinar, we want to share with you our experience in dealing with this with this number. The the good news uh, is that uh, many of the causes of the transformer failure can be largely within the operator's control. A complete monitoring system then avoids the most part of the transformer failures due basically to lack of maintenance, aging, electrical failure, or overloading.
And last but not least, the complete monitoring system helps also all of you to increase profitability, uh, reliability, and safety of uh, the entire transformer fleet. And this is uh, what we have to achieve uh, with uh, a global uh, monitoring system. Then we are ready to, to go on the Trafanova and see something more about our solution. If you remember a few moments ago, we sent uh, this infographic with the components responsible for the failures. Now, well, we, we see a large number of failure causes and uh, to maximize the mitigation of the risk, we have to consider uh, and monitor multiple factors like, for example, oil temperature, time delta degradation, values and trends of the gases, partially charged activity, and, and many others. Um, it is really fundamental to monitor the insulation of the system and the, the working condition of the transformer for all components. This to reduce the cost related to the transformer life cycle and even to guarantee the reliability and durability of the assets. This is exactly the aim of Strafonova. And you can see here in this graph, some uh, the majority of the items are now colored in green. Now uh, we are able to address up to almost 80% of the failure mode in a power transformer, mainly for winding, cooling system, OTC, oil, core, and bushing. This is just to recap the reduced failure risk using Trafonova. You can see that you can uh, cut 82% of the failures. And so on the right, you have uh, 18% as a residual failure modes in the transformer if you are able to monitor the components that are mentioned before. Trafonova is a modular and uh, configurable monitoring system that can also be combined according in different ways according to, to the requirements. Uh, basically, Trafonova allows to monitor uh, a lot of parameters. We divided this parameter in four groups, generic parameters, uh, like uh, line currents, oil temperature, bottom top cooling system, core and windy temperature, cooling system uh, in terms of current consumption of fan and pumps, then hotspot um, calculation and uh, the related loss of life. Then we have another model as uh, related to bushing monitoring to for the tan delta both as relative and absolute ton delta, then a capacitance, leakage current, ton delta degradation over time, and um, measure of the temperature of the bushing even. Then the parts relevant to the DGA, so we can use a different type of a DGA units from one gas up to nine gases for hydrogen, oxygen, methane, carbon monoxide, and dioxide. Uh, dioxide, etc. Et um, the last part is for the part of the charge monitoring, and we, we can have um, we will have a dedicated section for for this part. This is very crucial for, to be to have under control the insulation of the transformer. As you can see, some of these parameters are related to faults directly to faults or defects. Other are stressing factors, and we can have some example later on. All these measurements have a warning in the system and a threshold that can be set in order to highlight the problem uh, to SCADA system and uh, prevent, in this case, the failures. As I said, the models can be, all, uh, can be used all together for a um, global and extensive global monitoring system or individually. You have generic parameters, bushing monitoring, dissolved gas monitoring, and partial discharge monitoring. This very simple animation, you can see an example of uh, some sensors. This, the name are tap adapter uh, that are normally installed on the um, capacitive tap of the bushing. We have dedicated sensor for uh, tan delta. Other sensor, typically antennas for, in this case, UHF, ultra high frequency antenna to detect partially charge in the tank. DGA unit, 
and normally all or part of this sensor are connected to the Trafanova hub. We have in the next slide some other information regarding the hub. Inside the hub, we have uh, some acquisition units. One is dedicated to the Pachet de charge, another one for generic transformer parameter, and another one for the TAN delta. The Trafo Nova hub um, normally is installed close to the transformer and uh, has an on onboard data storage capability, so data can be visualized easily or can be downloaded with a common laptop anytime. The unit can be also connected to a central unit that uh, is normally installed in a, in a control room. Uh, with the, a web interface, we have some example later on, you can easily access to the, all the information of the Trafanova hub with the all parameters and alarms. To have a little bit more insight respect to uh, the acquisition unit, you can see here uh, the front panel of the acquisition unit responsible for transformer parameter. Also in this case, this is a modular system. It's composed by several up to 14 electronic carts. Every um, cart is designed to measure a specific parameter, for example, temperature through PT100 or PT1000, or currents to calculate the I square T and other um, electronic cards for analog input, for example, for DGA acquisition that can be acquired even through digital protocol. We, you have also on the left, fiber optic ports and some other ports to uh, be able to connect this system in the chain, even if you have um, a want to monitor um, several and different transformers. This is another configuration, again, in Trafanova hub, where you can see on the inside the red circle, uh, another unit, this is for Tandelta. Again, Tandelta is a, a module that can monitor up to 12 channels, six bushing and six uh, CVTs. And um, depending on the configuration, we, we can offer two different um, levels, two different solutions, the basic one, uh, for the relative 10 delta measurement and also leakage current and other parameters or the advanced one where you can use uh, and um, monitor also the absolute value of uh, the 10 deltas of the bushings and the several transformers. In terms of configurations, you can see here uh, three typical configuration. The first one at the basic where you connect the PD hub with uh, um, the three bushings only. Then two other advanced configuration where you have three bushing plus uh, additional three CVTs uh, that we use as reference or on the right, another advanced configuration where you have three bushing on the monitoring uh, plus other three that we use as reference. Uh, key features of the unit, we have 24 bits resolution analog digital converter. The unit is fully insulated and we have an internal watchdog in order to perform self-diagnosis and self-calibration for the system. Here, um, an example or sensor for partial discharge and uh, tan delta from the beginning, from the left, um, you can see different mode, model of uh, bushing tap adapters uh, here in, this, in the middle, tan delta sensor, and again, uh, UHF sensor that we can use to detect PDs. Now, some example of the installation on the left, installation of the temperature sensor or in the cooling system. Then a uh, tap adapter here connected to the bushing tap and the, the box here below for the tan delta. And on the right, um, an example of installation of tan delta, of, uh, sorry, DGA unit in this case was, if I remember well, two gases plus temperature and humidity. Other type of sensor are um, shown in this slide with the uh, the same another model of tap adapter 
and some probes for the temperature and another model of uh, G DGA. This is the part relevant to the HMI. Um, all the measurements acquired by the system are available through a local web server. So you don't have to install any software on your PC. You can connect directly to the, um, the PD, the um, Trafanova hub through IP address. This is a very easy way to, to see all the data and uh, the alarms. And uh, it is very useful possibility and option where when the system is not connected to a substation SCADA, it's always possible. If you can connect to SCADA, you can also use other and several digital protocols like IEC 61 PC, UA, etc. But uh, if you, for example, you want to have only a, um, one Trafanova hub uh, without any external connection, for example, for a pilot project, you can use this web interface and here you have some example. You have several tabs in overview, uh, as um, shown before, maintain, cooling, bushing, low voltage and high voltage, side, side arrestor. In this example, you can see the values, for example, of um, transformer temperature and the two um, temperature for the oil in the top side and the bottom side. The first one is green, so below the threshold, and the second one is above, is uh, colored in, in orange. Then on this part, other information regarding the cooling uh, system in terms of uh, oil temperature and the different part of the circuit. As you can see, every sensor with a dedicated um, figure, with a dedicated number regarding the, the measurement and also the status. And this other example, we are in the cooling uh, page. Then we have all information regarding the fan, the pump current, the I square T, RMS, and other information regarding the, the cooling system. This another example, uh, this is an important one. This is the alarm page. You, you have your several um, lines for each line you can have a detailed view of each alarm. And as you can see, uh, we have uh, for sure a timestamp, the source of the alarm, where it is located, fund number four, current measure, RMS, the value, the status, the threshold that you can also set in, ad, in the admin page, in this case is five. So the value 6.45 is above our threshold. Then you have the message, warning, threshold, current fund number four. Then uh, another point, another column for the acknowledged status. This section is relevant to another very important factor that we have to consider when we have, want to monitor globally. Um, power transformer, even medium voltage transformer. It is related to the partial discharge part. Because as you know, during its life, power transformer suffers from a lot of uh, stresses like uh, thermal, mechanical, chemical, and uh, electrical. And uh, this uh, uh, point uh, can lead to uh, deterioration of the transformer condition in terms of uh, the electric strength, mechanical strength, and even thermal integrity of the windings. To go a little bit more in detail, in particular, we can see that thermal process can cause degradation of uh, cellulose, for example, through polymerization process or oxidation or schism of polymeric chains. And these two elements can be detected through uh, partial discharge monitoring and even with the DGA system. But we can have also electrical problems causing a partial discharge in the paper and the press board or even discharges in, in oil. Also, in this case, we can have very good result using PD uh, detection unit. We can have a localized problem in the bushings uh, with the uh, defects in general in, in the installation or even in um, faulty bushing tabs. 
Other times we have bulk problems in the bush. In, in this case, we use uh, the tan delta to detect uh, the, the electric losses due to, for example, absorption of water uh, or moisture, or problems due to bad assembling and bad connections in the, in the bushing. And uh, we can have uh, problems that can be detected even with uh, partial discharge using particular kind of sensor, uh, typically antennas for all LTC. In general, when we have a uh, uh, partial discharge, we have, uh, and looking to the whole process, we have to take in consideration um, several aspects. For example, we have to choose the right sensor to detect PD, and we have to use also uh, the right acquisition unit and the right software and the algorithm to perform um, a useful processing and, and reporting. In this example, you can have some uh, PD, PD sensors. The first one, bushing taps. Normally, uh, high voltage transformer are provided with capacitive taps, um, which can be represented uh, typically as a divider in parallel to, to the transformer. We have other type of sensor for uh, HFCT, high frequency current transformer. If the tap adapter is not available, we can use a CT installed around the ground lead of the high voltage cable connected to the transformer. On some other cases, antennas, like in, in this um, picture here below, we can have internal um, UHF uh, sensor like uh, the probes that normally are used in the oil valve or external UHF antenna as represented in the, this uh, picture. We can use mainly for a medium voltage application even the capping capacitor, as uh, you can see here in this picture, or again, CTs on a medium voltage cable in the ground link on the medium voltage cable, or if the ground lead is not available, we have 140 or even higher internal diameter of special CTs that can be installed around the medium voltage cable connected to the transformer. In general, uh, our consideration that we prefer to get the signal and to use capacitive tap and even uh, the tap adapter um, because this is the best method to detect all PD activities, uh, not only on the bushing, but even the tank. Otherwise, it's always possible uh, to use other sensor even in combination uh, where for example tap um, the tap adapter is not is not um, present in the in the in the bushings coming to the acquisition part you have in this scheme the transformer you can have one type of sensor or multiple types of sensor tap adapter UHF CTs but even acoustic and then all of them are connected to the same Trafanova hub and uh, internally to the PD partially charge acquisition unit. This is a very special acquisition unit. This is a wide bandwidth acquisition unit up to 40 megahertz roughly. And, and you can connect up to six sensors, but we can have configuration up to 12, 18, and even above a uh, number of channels. And uh, for Trafanova Hub, we have embedded a TF map technology that I will show you in the next slides. Let me uh, just uh, do a step back for, for the definition of partial discharge. I know that probably the majority of you already know. The definition that is according, there are several definitions. We can use uh, this one according to IC60 270. And basically, uh, PD is uh, a localized electrical discharge that's only partially breached the insulation between conductors, and then um, which can occur or not addition to the conductor. We have to say is that uh, since PD are related to the aging of the insulation, that can be the cause or effect of the degradation of the insulation. On the bottom, you can see a typical representation of uh, partial discharge. The name of this graph is Pays Resolve PD 
pattern, PRPD pattern. And you have on the vertical axis, the amplitude of the, of the pulse. And the, in, in the horizontal axis, axis you have the, the phase angle. Um, there are other, there are also colors in the graph. Colors are related to the um, number of pulses per cycle. And the PD pattern are important because based on PD pattern, the, um, the fatigue identific identification can be carried out quite easily, not always, since, uh, since different defect typologies forms different PD pattern shapes. You have some example here. We can have internal PD and uh, you have a typ this typical uh, pattern shape. You can have surface PD here in the middle with this typical triangle shape of the pattern. And even the last main category is Corona. A partial discharge, and this is very typical um, concentration of point in in a dedicated in a very narrow part of the graph. Identification is a, a really crucial factor in for the PD assessment because we have to take in consideration that normally um, internal PD are more and more dangerous than surface PD, and again surface PD are in general more more dangerous with respect to to corona discharges. This is quite simple, but uh, when we move from the labs on from uh, to the real cases, as you can see in this graph, diagnosis is normally not so easy to achieve. It's normally uh, it's not possible in, in a lot of cases using standard devices. And as you can see in this uh, uh, PRPD, we have a high level of background noise and this is typically in um, in online test and the monitoring. And uh, in this case, this kind of pattern can hardly affect the result of the of the diagnosis. I want to to spend a few seconds regarding the, the processing and the innovation of Altanova in dealing with this kind of matters. I mean, partially charged in an online system. We start more or less 20 years ago. Uh, to, to find and develop a method to reject the noise and identify the partial discharge source even in an online uh, um, assessment. And this is our fundamental innovation. Basically, um, we uh, through the acquisition of uh, the pulses, we calculate uh, two new parameters, not only amplitude and phase angle, but uh, time equivalent time and equivalent frequency. And through these two parameters, we can build a classification map or TF map. So another graph that you can see here, where you can find, and you can easily recognize three, in this case, different group of points, colored in black, red, and blue. And after the process, the system is capable to rebuild the PRPD using only um, each homogeneous group of points. I mean, one for the black um, group of points, one for the red, and one for the blue. And you can see that for each group of points, you can identify different kind of sources. For the black one, disobustance and noise. For the red one, internal PD. And for the blue one, uh, surface PD. So in this case, you can find a multiple PD below the noise level. And this is very useful. This is very important when you test or monitoring power transformer, where you can have multiple PD sources and you can have even a, a high level of uh, background noise. Trafanova. Um, implement this uh, this technology uh, that we have also in other type of devices and this is again uh, a very plus when you talk about pd in uh, in transformer uh, regarding uh, typical pd prpd pattern i uh, would like to share with you in this slide two typical uh, patterns on the left uh, a one pattern related to partial discharge in um, bubbles in oil bubbles and on the right, interface PD. Interface PD are typical PD that occurs on the interface of uh, two different materials with different dielectric strength. 
there are many other um, type of defect that can be um, identified with the system. For example, corona discharges, cavities uh, in the layer and paper, or even the metallic particle in the oil. Just uh, to share with you how we are experiencing global monitoring results for high voltage power transformer located in uh, Europe, 220, 132 kV was a, a, a new installation, new transformer, but uh, since the beginning it's with the problem with a critical level of uh, H2, so high level of hydrogen concentration. So we propose to this uh, um, partner the installation of um, uh, temporary, in this case, global monitoring system to address the question of the customer about uh, the possibility or the necessity to take out of service the transformer to do more inspection and to understand the reason why the H2, H2 was too high. This was the, the layout of the, of the system. We installed three tan delta and partially charged sensor on the bushing taps on the top of the death transformer. And we installed also a DGA unit, two gases plus temperature and humidity of the oil. The, um, this sensor were connected to the acquisition hub, in this case for uh, Tan Delta and the partially charged and, and DGA. And at the end, another connection to the central unit located in the control room with the dedicated human machine interface on the, the, on the screen. This was on the next slide, the first uh, uh, snapshot, the, the first results after one month of monitoring, two different kind of PD, internal PD were detected. The first one was a sporadic activity. This is typically due to gas bubble in the oil. And uh, look, when you test with the portable devices, this kind of uh, PD are not so easy to detect uh, because mainly they are uh, sporadic. Uh, so the probability to trigger this kind of event is uh, uh, increase a lot when you use a permanent 24-7 um, monitoring uh, solution. We detect even uh, interface PD. Again, the interface PD is something that appear on the uh, interface between two different materials with the different uh, the letter strength. And uh, on top of these two, let me say internal PD, we detect also coronas as usual. And you can see here in this graph, two lines. This is, in my opinion, is an important slide that show how the classification of, um, of our technology can help in the diagnosis of, uh, of the transformer. You have two lines, one in color red and blue. When we plot um, the combination of all phenomena, interface PD, corona, bubble, and um, and all the phenomena detected by the system. And with the red one, the trend related only to the interface PD that for our experience is the most dangerous PD that you can have on, um, in, the, in the transformer. Um, this is important because mainly if I can go to this one just to reinforce the concept and using the uh, this technology, you can avoid a lot of false alarm. You can uh, set threshold and alarms only for, in this case, interface PD, and uh, you can reject corona and bubble that are not so dangerous for, for the transformer. So after one month, the action where the first one, the oil treatment was carried out by the utility. And after the oil treatment, the first activity related to the bubbles disappear immediately after a few hours. But um, the, the second one, so the interface PD um, appeared again immediately. Uh, so the oil treatment in this case don't cause any, any benefit in the condition of the transformers. So uh, we decide to, to keep the system working for additional six months. And these are the results after six months. Uh, you have a lot of information in this slide. Basically, the first one is related to 10 Delta trends on the first 
the the value of tan delta for six months and uh, here the capacitance value as you can see in both of the cases the values are pretty stable with no um, increase in the, in the time not the same for the concentration of h2 uh, during the monitoring period we we reach uh, around 30 an increase of 30 uh, ppm per day so part per million every every day, highlighting in this case that the, there was a problem inside the transformer. And DPD activities were detected as uh, during the first months, uh, interface PD mainly, but we know uh, trends in, uh, in terms of amplitude neither in uh, um, reputation rate. And after this uh, additional six months, we um, have here the conclusion. So you get the PD, uh, in this case, are generated at the three uh, domes, the three interface. Uh, domes are the, the position just below the bushing uh, due to not perfect oil filling on the transformer. Then the utility and the side to perform um, drained and uh, what's the transformer was drained and the gases was after uh, fill it up again slowly in this case with the hot oil in order to avoid uh, any kind of empty empty regions and then um, they put on service again um, the transformer with the monitoring system installed the result at the end as you can see the transformer was completely pd free no further h2 hydrogen increase uh, were registered and um, the interface between air and oil was completely eliminated the conclusion of this job at this experience was, uh, let me say, very positive for, for the hand user. And we reach a very good result also in terms of sensitivity of the system in comparison with uh, the offline uh, methods that uh, normally the utility uses uh, for, for big uh, and power transformer. Last slide, we start our uh, presentation discussing about strategies to increase uh, profitability, reliability, and, uh, and safety. And we can say that uh, thanks to the global monitoring system, we can have a better visibility of the status of the transformer and uh, or even a better understanding of the risk. These are the, for sure the key factors to, to improve the mitigation strategies and, uh, and giving from, again, less concerns to, to, all, to all of you and all transformer operators regarding the, the status of the, of the transformer. This was the, the last consideration from, from my side. Before your question, I would like to uh, thank you again another time for, for being with us uh, uh, today, attending to, to our webinar about Trafanova. If you have any other kind of requests or for information or to download the presentation here on this last slide of contact, you can reach me on the, my address, uh, marco.pigaltanova-group.com or through my LinkedIn profile and uh, even through my mobile number.